the crowd will be uh, cheering on Ding Junhui here. Although, of course, Liang Wenbo as well, I'm sure, will have plenty of fans. Uh, I've had my cue since I was uh, 15, and uh, I got it for my birthday. And I've had the same cue ever since. Not sure what it's made of. A wooden one. <laughs> I've just tried not to lose it. Only joking. <laughs> Hopefully it'll earn me a lot of money and a lot of tournament wins. Dominic Dale, he, he, he would know. I don't know, I just like it, you know. Like um, the grain on my queue is um, is very nice. I like. I designed the bat on it. I had some um, a burr walnut with a green veneer on the bottom of the bat, just as a front facing splice, which is just something to sort of differentiate my queue with everyone else's queue, really. Um, but yeah, it's a lovely queue, and I won't. Hopefully, I won't be changing that unless I absolutely have to. When we look down the queue, we always look down the same part of the queue and we have what we call, we call them arrows on the top of the, the shaft of an ash queue. You have these little pointed arrows like this and some people like five or six along the shaft of the queue. I've got about 12 on mine but they're very evenly spaced so when I look down you've got these little arrows going down the shaft of the queue. It helps you aim I think and, and uh, when you look down the queue it helps you. I don't know, I just like it you know. Most of the players uh, play with the arrows pointing towards the cue ball. I know lots of Ronnie O'Sullivan and Mark Selby, people like that, but I, I use the opposite arrows. I use the arrows coming, coming back towards me. Uh, I, I've just always cues since I was a young boy. I've always used the arrows coming back towards my eye line. I don't know why, but uh, I always like that a little bit better. <laughs> This is maple, so the grain is not as prominent as with the ash cues. Most of the top players use ash cues, uh, so obviously the wood is, is very different. My cue is an ash cue. Lots of players play with, with maple cue, I think Steve Maguire and, and Stephen Henry. Made maple, made by John Paris. It's made of ash and it's about 100 years old. It's an old uh, billiards cue. I've always played with ash. I mean, I've never really played with a maple cue, so I wouldn't know any different. So as far as I'm concerned, even if I was to change from the cue I had now to another cue, it'd still be another ash cue because it's all I've ever known. The cues don't matter, really. I, yeah, you know, the cue that I won seven world titles was probably the worst cue you've ever seen. So it's important to just be comfortable with the cue. It doesn't matter what make. <laughs> Twenty-one years I've had my queue, so um, yeah, a long time. Um, just try not to lose it. If anything happens to this queue, it's going to be a disaster for me. I think it's, um, I, I really struggle to find a queue as good as this one. I wouldn't have any problems changing it. I don't think. I think um, I've got some uh, queues ready just in case if, if something happens to it. Some players would struggle a lot, but I can sort of play with any kind of cue. I've, um, you know, I've played really well with, uh, with, with just taking a, a cue off the rack in a, in a snooker club. So. It took me a while to get used to it, about, I don't know, probably a good 12 months to get used to it. And because it's very thick, a lot of, um, probably play with a, one of the thicker cues and a lot of players play with. And well, you can't change it with no problem because every cue is different. It's not like a set of golf clubs or something like that. It's totally different. If I... <laughs> I don't know what I would do. Um, it would be awful for me. It would be terrible. I'm sure it would take me a long time to get used to a new queue. This one works for me, but another one would work for me too. It's, uh, it is just a piece of wood at the end of the day.
snooker 球坛最重要的。Steve Davis is buzzing around these winter gardens like you wouldn't believe. Who have you found now, Steve? Oh, I found John Paris Cuba. There's the two lads on this table we've been watching today. They've been playing with John's cues. Obviously, the one doing well, one not. So all day long here we've got master classes going on. John Paris is going to be giving a master class on how to put a tip on, how to choose a cue, how to look after it. We've had an email in, John,、uh, from Sam Kempson. I'm new to the sport, looking to buy a cue. I know no cues very much from the type of wood, the size of the tip, the length. So what should I look out for, considering I only have a limited budget? I mean, always try and buy the best cue you can afford. But the important thing is that you get a cue that suits you, and that you you know stick with it for a while. Any any cue that is yours is better than going to a club and picking out a racker. So go to a shop that's reputable, someone who can give you some good advice. Try a cue out. Or, or even if it's over the phone, talk to someone before you、uh, you see it. Or try and find a site that's got lots of information on. Buy a cue and then try and pick one out that's that's comfortable for you. Really, that's the most important thing. No two players are exactly the same. No two cues, definitely not the same. They all have their own little characteristics. So you know, get one that feels good and you know stick with it and get used to the characteristics and the way that cue plays. Well, we could talk all day long about cues, but very quickly on that. So, okay, type of wood.、Uh, there's, there's only a couple of types, isn't there? There's, there's, for, the, for, the, for the shaft material, ash or ash, <laughs> ash or maple. Ash is by far the most preferred. I think probably 95% of players go for an ash shaft. With the butts, you can get various woods inlaid into the butt. Two, two reasons: one, it, it looks good, gives a nice smooth feel. The other one really is it adds a natural weight. And balance to the cue, so you don't have to put loads of unbalanced materials. Just put lead in there with with a nice hardwood ebony butt. It gives the cue a nice weight and feel, just naturally.、So. Tip size. What's what's it roughly? Diameter of tip size. Nine point five is the default size. Again, it's a preference thing. Some people like a smaller tip. Some people like a bigger one. But you can't really go much wrong with a nine point five. It, it it will do everything you want it to do, really. And for the height of a cue, they roughly come in at the same height most of the times, about 58 inches, something like that, is the bog standard. But if you're a younger player, if you've got a kid playing the game, you can't have it too small because then he can't reach any of the shots. So, is there a sort of default size for a young kid of say this height, something like that? That's right. I mean, if, if, if the cue's too long, they're going to be holding it so far up the butt that they, they lose the balance completely. So, they need a bit to grow into because I mean, youngsters shoot up overnight. So, really, they want to be holding the cue and perhaps have. You know, perhaps eight inches past their their grip. Depends how old they are. I mean, you know, the younger allow a bit more growth. I mean, what we do sometimes is we'll we'll make someone a a full length cue, but with a shorter butt to go with it, so that they then grow into it. They they get used to the same cue, stick with the same shaft, but the cue grows with them. Okay, well, thanks very much, John. John's going to be here for a couple of、uh, times this、uh, the the the,、uh, the master class. But、um, Hazel, so if you do need a cue. It can be measured up. Yeah, wherever you go in the country, there'll be a specialist maker who can measure you up for a cue. I know your goal's struggling a bit. Well, goal's struggling Take up big、snooker. time. Absolutely, yeah. It's that's what motherhood does for you. You can't play anything. Anyway, <laughs>